prayer. I shared with you a few months ago about a guy called Brother Ali. He lives in Iran, pastors a church there. And when COVID hit back in March last year, it hit the world, they responded a bit differently from how I responded. Their priority was not their own safety, was not working out what to do and restrictions. They did all that. They kept people safe, as we should. Their priority was God. Their priority was prayer. Their priority was seeking him. And actually their prayer wasn't, God, rescue us from this, take it away, keep me safe. Their prayer was, Jesus, how do we share your love? How do we share the forgiveness you want on the cross for everybody within this season, within the restrictions, within this day, the days of fear and the days of anxiety? So they sought God for six weeks as a church, praying and fasting. And then God gave them a strategy. Uh, he wasn't able to share that because, of course, there are persecuted people there um, and needs to keep those things to, tied to his chest. But out of how they were able, God initiated still to reach out. They saw last August one village uh, reached for Jesus, 250 people turning to Christ and the imam himself have an encounter with Christ. Isn't that amazing? I'm aware of myself that I've lived so much of my life about what I can see, what's around me, the standards of the world, the wisdom of the world, and all those things. And uh, it's not about going, oh, that's terrible, or evil, or wrong. It's about recognising that's never going to do it. And we find ourselves, don't we, I'm sure like me, struggling, because most of the time I feel so frustrated. Because we don't know what to do, and... People out there are so desperate and so broken. It's, the veil has been lifted. What do we do? And that's what we're calling you to pray about. For us all to pray and seek God on this Friday, but beyond. God, how? How do we be the expression of Jesus to our neighbours, to our friends now in this? And how do we reach out? Quick little story from, two, uh, from 1 Samuel, sorry. At the end of uh, that book, David is in the wilderness. He's got a group of men around him. He's been rejected by the then king Saul. And uh, he's having this sort of community and he's been off with his men. They return to find that the Amalekites have attacked. They've taken off all of their goods, wives and children. Everything is lost. They've experienced a massive challenge, an incredible life-changing event. It's amazing what happened. They, um, they wept because it was horrific and it was sad and it broke them. But then, of course, the men are starting to murmur and starting to go, hey, this is David's fault. And so they're looking to maybe even stone him. They're, they're blaming him for what's happened. And, of course, we all know when... Stuff, bad stuff happens, we all look for someone to blame. But then it says a stunning thing. What did David do? He did two things. And this is what I want to encourage you to do. Firstly, it says, he strengthened himself in the Lord. David found strength in God. It doesn't tell us how he did that, but that's what he did. And we've got to continually find strength in Christ. Because what David didn't want to do was just respond off the top of his head. He wasn't going to respond out of like trying to appease or run away or sort it out. He knew the first thing he had to do was not sort out the problem, but was bring him to a place of strength in God. And as I shared on uh, Sunday, and if you listen to this week's um, teaching, that strength is not about you being strong. It's strength in God. He's strong and you find his strength. And then secondly, finding strength in God. He sought God. He called uh, a priest and... They sought God about what they should do. Should we pursue or not? And God spoke. And that's a place I want to call us to. I think that's a great challenge and encouragement to me. To not respond or merely look at or pray out of what I think is best or what seems to be the right thing. But to find strength in Jesus at this point. And church, can we find, maybe for the first time, A place where actually we live by faith and not by sight. Where what is spiritual, 
what God is saying is actually what we put front and centre. And God's clever. He's very, very wise. He'll know how we can do it within all the stuff, how we can do it in a way where we keep people safe. Please hear me. I'm not talking about rejecting that and going the other way. I'm saying, hey, within this, that's what they did in Iran. That's what Brother Ali said. God, how do I, within this situation, show Jesus? We have this treasure in jars of clay to show us all surpassing powers from God, not from us. I give you permission to seek God, to ask Him, and let's believe that He will speak to us. God bless you. And then I saw you shine, shine, shine like the sun.